Hi, Seed Lovers. You are now in Creative List exclusive interview with me, Tristan Hatono. Today, we're going to have an interview with one of my favorite musicians. But that's not important because what's more important is we're now having Ali Lacey, an in a Welsh indie folk musician, better known under the moniker of Novo Emmer. Hi, Ali. We're so happy to have you here. Congratulations on your newest single, if you're being honest. But first of all, since you write it in your lyrics, let me say happy belated birthday to you. How are you and how's your quarantine going right now? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, everything is going okay for me at the moment. I'm held up in my studio at the moment and the, the, the quarantine has been going okay, I guess. Um, it, it's been easing off slowly in the UK where I live. Um, so I've been able to kind of go out a little bit more and social distance with my friends a bit. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And by the way, in which part of the world are you right now? I'm in Cardiff in Wales. It's in the UK. Okay. And uh, it's been two years since you visited Jakarta. What is the thing or things that you miss from Indonesia? Like the food or place or the traffic maybe? What is it? Um, I, th I, I, I miss the difference in culture. I mean, it's so different going there to being here. It's the furthest I've ever gone to play a show and it's the furthest I've ever been from home mm -hmm. in my life. And the culture was so um, alien to me. Like we, we managed to travel to to Java to go to the, the Aijin volcano and kind of meet all the miners there and kind of um, just meet all the locals and kind of suck up that culture a bit and everyone was just so friendly and nice and the weather was amazing um and my time in jakarta was quite short we we played the festival and had to kind of leave the next day um but my favorite thing about the whole the whole the whole trip was just meeting the fans and seeing how lovely everyone was and seeing the reaction to my music like being able to travel kind of 14 hours on a plane getting on stage and then have like 2,000 people sing my lyrics back to me just it, it really moved me like it hasn't before so that's when this this sounds great but sadly i didn't know you that time yet so i didn't know you, you uh, no. okay uh next question will be this in if we're being honest stream your chatting session in youtube you said that you usually start with the music when it comes to writing song but since i see that your lyrics is more like poetic and kind of tricky and hard to memorize them because it sounded pretty much the same but I love that anyway uh, like that part on folks and cold uh, I want to ask you where do you usually seek for inspiration when it comes to writing lyrics um, yeah you're right I like them to feel a bit more mysterious and I don't want I don't want to people to hear a song and be like oh that is obviously about this I'd, I'd rather people make up their own mind, so I never really kind of say what song meanings are about. Um, sometimes they have like a really deep personal meaning to me, sometimes they're kind of more vague to me, and I'll write, like you said, the music first, and it'll usually be like um, chords and just mumbled melodies, like not real words, just syllables coming out of my mouth, and then eventually I'll kind of fit phrases into them and then kind of pick a meaning from like the first couple of phrases and then kind of go off that. Um, so the inspiration usually usually will be kind of uh, sometimes it'll be a subconscious thing of me just mumbling that melody or those kind of words in there and thinking yes let's go off that idea but usually it's kind of about times in my life my past my my present my friends kind of what I've been up to and how my life has changed in the last kind of 10 years through my like 20s now I'm 29 I've kind of gone through this whole I guess um, transformative stage of my life and I guess early 20s are very, very much a big thing for people it's where they kind of find themselves or whatever um, and a lot of my music is about that it's about it's about my my time in the world really and my relationships with people that's great and uh, speaking of which you about your past and and stuff that is really happening to you I want to ask you uh, this question about uh, your album you said that in birth birthplace it's more like the countryside and uh, cannot be whatsoever it's more like the city so are right. we going to find any new vibes here or what i 
Yeah, I, I listened to Birthplace. I listened to some of the songs from Birthplace the other night for the first time in like a year, maybe. And it was, I had this really nostalgic feeling of making them in my studio and kind of the, the snow outside and stuff like that. And it all felt very calm. Um, and this this album was kind of made more in the, the springtime. And um, well, at least it was kind of started in winter, then went through like the spring when I finished it. Um, and it, it just there just felt like there's so much more energy in the music like there's more kind of upbeat drums and I had more more thoughts about playing it live so I was kind of like this will be amazing to play live so let's kind of put this in there and let's think about kind of how these drums will feel um, and it was a lot more collaborative in, in terms of the writing and the production because my friend Ed who Ed Tullett who I've got a record out with already um, he he was kind of there in the room for so much of this stuff like we would write so much of it together we would kind of be on like like calls like this and sharing each other ideas i'd record something send it to him and he'd record something back and then just like i'd build it up from from that point and it just felt like um it just felt like there was more going on it was less of me just sat on my own making music and it's just yeah i guess the energeticness of it just kind of makes me feel like it's comparable to the city and birthplace is more of the country. Okay, that's a great answer. You kind of reply, uh, you can answer two of my questions, that's great. Oh, yeah. And uh, about the album artwork, uh, I see that you kind of put every little details in it and I just can stare at it for a while and I, I'm going to find something or read something new right there. Uh, yeah. Do you do you have any no, not explanation, but uh, more like what is the meaning of the of this album album artwork and how is it related to the album? Um, so the album artwork is by this lady from the Netherlands called Tilke Schwarz, um, and basically it was something Ed and I were in the studio one night and thinking about well what should I use for artwork and I had a few ideas and then he just stumbled across this lady's artwork and he was like have you seen this before this is like really really original I don't think anyone would have used anything like this and I kind of looked through loads and loads of her work I was like ah it's yeah I really like it but there's nothing quite there and then I found the album artwork piece and by the time I'd finished the album it kind of really fit it fit what the music was about to me so well like there's this The artwork is kind of this box with all this kind of stuff kind of flying around and this hand kind of dipping into it. And there's um, just all these quotes all over the place and just random writing, which doesn't seem to make any sense. And to me, it really reflected the process of making an album, especially this album, because I'm a very indecisive person and making music can really, really feel like a mess. Like you just have all these ideas in your head and you kind of try to you know, grasp them and like pull them near you and just kind of refine them. Um, and that, that's kind of what the album cover looks like to me. There's all these words like pop out in your head and these pictures and you're kind of trying to grab onto them and shape them into something. And kind of that's like a quick explanation of it, I guess. Um, and naming a lot of songs after the, the writing on the front of the album as well. Okay, that's great. And... I kind of found this, uh, so, by the way, uh, the handwriting is totally random. Yeah. Uh, is it your handwriting or or what? The, the writing on the front, mm -hmm. um, that is all, that's all her writing. Um, oh, the, the, okay. the piece was, that, that piece of artwork was made in 2001. So I was like nine years old <laughs> or 10 years old or something. I was like five years um, old. Yeah, yeah, a long, a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, it already, it already existed. I, I did originally ask her to create something specific for the album, but uh, we, we, we kind of like fell in love with this piece, so I just went with it. Okay, okay then. Um, uh, next question, and I'm so eager to ask you this question. Yeah. Uh, what song that you keep playing over and over again and never get enough of it? Because mine is Carry You and Repeat Until Death by you. Of of my songs or...? No, no, no. Of, uh, from other musicians' songs or...? Uh, okay, yeah, good. Because I, I, really, I, I don't really listen to my own songs. Uh, um, <laughs> it's a very good question. And whenever someone asks me like what I'm listening to or what's my favorite artist right now, it's kind of a tough one because I have to think back about what I've been listening to. Um, who have I been listening to? Uh, so, 
five saying this is just recently I've been repeating this band called Great Grandpa um, there's a song called Bloom um, which I kind of fell in love with they have a really great album called Four of Arrows and their song Bloom is one of them um, I, I guess I've also been Ed's, Ed's band Hairlaker I, I like completely madly in love with because so their, their song Labradors is my favorite off the last album and kind of I helped them record it and you know I had no input other than just setting up microphones and kind of saying yeah this sounds good this doesn't sound good let's do this um, and yeah I'm completely in love with that song okay I think I'm going to search that song too <laughs> uh, okay uh, listening to your songs actually kind of want me to put it in some emotional scene in a kind of a short movie if I ever make one and mm -hmm. I figure out that uh, you you'd like to try film scoring so if you got a chance to score any films or series what would it be film scoring yeah it was something I was really really interesting it interested in like a long time ago um, so I haven't given it much thought about what I would like to do in terms of that uh, that area of the industry um, I think My, I think my music would be best suited. I think I'd be best at scoring like some sort of like really bleak romantic film, um, you know, like P.S. I Love You or something like that, you know, okay. um, with loads of sweeping strings or, you know, um, yeah. All right. Uh, yes, I love or, or something or something really dark. Uh, like a horror film, it'd be really great to score like a horror film, just make some really scary noises and really just something that's the complete juxtaposition to the music I make. It'd be quite fun. Yeah. Okay. I more think like a uh, film like uh, as well as family things, like a broken family that would be deeper. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, something like an indie film, like Garden State, like, yeah, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I think this will be the last two questions. Okay. The, one, the first one is, uh, would you like to tell me five things you'd really love to do after the pandemic is over? Okay, yeah. Um, so, firstly, tour, which I have you know, plans to tour, but who knows if they go ahead. I want to just go on holiday and travel myself. I want to go back to... Um, I want to go back to America just for myself and go um, further into Asia. Um, after the pandemic was over, I like to I like to just hang out with my friends, you know, and kind of go to the pub or something and have a drink and not worry about, you know, catching something then getting my dad ill and killing him. Um, that was that. That's three. What else would I like to do after the pandemic? Um, sure. I mean. Yeah. Going yeah, tour, tour. Going back to America and then uh, hanging out with your friends. That's three already. Three. What else would I like to do? Um, I mean, it, it kind of everything else I can kind of do because I'm, I'm very like self-sufficient person in my studio, kind of doing what I want to do. Uh, I would. I don't, I don't know. It's, Maybe. I guess uh, I don't. I don't. What well, What would you like to do? What would you fill in those other two gaps with? Maybe you want to want to explore Asia, especially Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I said, yeah, I want to, I want to go on holiday a bit more, travel further into Asia. Um, I'd love to go back to the Ijen Crater volcano. That's something I really, really want to do, actually. Um, so that can be one. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to, I want to go to Bali and in um, as well um, in yes, Indonesia. Try. The, the, the whale from my birthplace video is in a small village there. And I want to go and visit it, so that'd be nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, you never visited that place, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay, I hope next year you'll go to Bali at least once. Yeah. And then what would be the last one? Maybe, um, uh, was that not all of them? There was, <laughs> there was tour. There was you go on holiday, mm -hmm. go to the pub with my friends, go to Bali. And visit the whale and then go to Ijen Crater. So there's five, but like, you know, two of them okay. are Indonesia. That's acceptable. <laughs> yeah. 
And oh, the yes. last one is uh, any messages you would like to say to your Indonesian fans, especially the one who are asking about you coming back here. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much for the support, guys. I, I love you so much. And it means the world to me that um, there's such a demand for me to come back and play. And I really, really want to. And I tried to make it work last year. I tried to add it to my Asia tour, but I, I couldn't actually get a promoter to put the show on because of it. it was festival season and no one would take the show. And it was a shame. That's the truth. And now I'm trying to do the same thing again and add an Indonesia show to my Asia tour or just get it somewhere in the next year. I really, really want to come back and play. Um, so thank you so much for being patient and hopefully we can make it work. I look forward to meeting you all in person again. Yeah. Finger crossed. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Ali, for your time. Good luck for your album. They will come out at November 6th, nearly yep. three weeks before my birthday. So go pre-order right. it, everyone. Uh, stay healthy and safe and wear masks. So if you really want Nova Irma to come back here, and I hope we'll meet you next year. Bye, Ali. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you.